Hey guys, we're gonna be setting up React and GraphQL on the front end. To do this, we're gonna be using Create React App and Apollo for GraphQL. So Create React App, you can go ahead and just type this into your command line and then the name of your application. I'm gonna call mine Slack Clone Client. Um, I already did this and I'm already in that folder. You wanna CD into the folder when you're all done. And uh, if you do not have this, what you can do is install it by saying npm dash uh, or npm i dash g. This globally installs things, and you can say create React app to go ahead and install that. Um, and then when we're in here, we have we can do a little ls. We can see we have a React application up and running. Um, I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code, and I have it right here. I'm going to go ahead and start up the server and we can see what we have here is basically a little starter kit for react so it gives us some files here um, and it's basically a little introduction to react and I have this I have something running on my port so I just say yes when it says do you want to run on a different port and here's our react application this is what the starter kit comes with just some basic HTML okay so there's a few things I want to do with this. We're also going to set up React Router. But first, I want to set up ESLint because I'm a big fan of it. So I'm going to do ESLint init. And again, if you don't have ESLint, um, you can install it using NPM. So I'm going to be using Airbnb, and we are using React. And I'll take JavaScript. So that will go ahead and install that. And then what this will do is it will add a .eslintrc file in here. And while that's loading, I'm going to go ahead and get started over here. So we don't need some of this stuff. Like I don't need app.css. I don't need a test file. I don't need this index.css. But we can keep um, index.js and app.js. So this just calls our app. That's cool. Um, we can put more stuff here though, which we will. Um, here we're getting uh, no document, so these little lines is when ESLint is working. Um, unfortunately, ESLint with Airbnb has a weird problem, so um, they recommend running this command right here. I'll put a link to this uh, npm package so you can run this as well. Basically, you have to run this command to install the right packages. And because I'm on fish, I need to bash it. So I run that command and it installs the right versions. And then these errors will go away. So we don't need index.js for this. And I'm actually going to basically configure my um, React application or my Apollo stuff in the index folder. And then I'm going to create a folder called um, screens. So screens is kind of where I'm going to put all the things. and we can call this screens, we can call this routes. I guess routes makes, oops, um, routes makes more sense. We'll call it routes since we're doing a web application. And so we'll put index in there and I'm gonna create a index file. So here I'm basically gonna put all the pages of my application. Um, so I'm gonna import routes from dot slash routes and then I'm going to create a const app and here is where I'm going to put all my Apollo stuff and we're going to render our routes and we're just going to pass our app in here so we're not going to uh, import it this way and definition for function print new line I think that's okay so that didn't work. This thingy. I guess I guess the copy and paste is not working, or maybe it did work. I don't know if this worked or not. Um, but this page right here, my ESLint, um, we can see if it's working. File was not validated. Okay, this looks like now it's working. So I got a little thingy here. I just need to reload my window. Um, I actually don't know how to do with Visual Studio Code. I'm sure there's a hotkey 
to reload this, but I don't know it off the top of my head, so I'm just going to close and reopen. And then ESLint restarts when I do this, and we're good to go. So I'm going to put it over here. Okay, and we'll notice all those weird errors went away. So now there is a couple other things, and I don't know if my server might have stopped running too. Yeah, because I was running it in the terminal of right here. But we'll worry about that in a second. Uh, let's actually get rid of this real quick. So this ESLint warning is telling me that um, document is not defined. This is a global. So if I go into .ESLint RC, this is where we see the configuration file for ESLint. I'm just going to say uh, globals, I believe is what it's called. And we're going to say document and then a one to say it, it is a global. And I'm going to save. And we can put a comma. There we go. And then Prettier cleans everything up and makes it nice. It might be global or globals. Okay, globals worked. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of this rule right here because we're going to call everything JS. So to, test, to say a rule you don't want to follow, you create a rules object. You paste, oops, you paste in a rule. Oops, I thought I copied that. You paste in a rule you don't want, so I don't want this rule, and I'm going to say zero. And now that error goes away. So now I have ESLint configured pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and install two packages that we want. So I want React Apollo, which will allow us to do GraphQL stuff, and then React Router DOM, which is what we're going to use to switch pages. So. I'll show you guys real quick. The uh, this is the setup and getting started for React Apollo. Um, we are installing it with Yarn, and then what we need to do is this guy right here. So we need to create a client, point it to our GraphQL endpoint, um, and then create a provider and do that jazz. So let's copy this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. And we need the Apollo provider as well. And this URL is our GraphQL endpoint. So it's currently running at localhost. And I have mine at 8081. This is when we set up the server and we put in our port number we wanted. You're going to want to put that same one. All right, we're going to create a client here. And I'm going to get rid of this since it's just the same thing. And I'm going to wrap this with the provider. Apollo provider. And we pass in our client. And what this allows us to do is anywhere between the Apollo provider, we can do GraphQL things. So in all our routes. And Oh, it just wants absolute first. There we go. All right, so in our routes here, where it's configure React Router. So we installed React Router DOM like we needed to, and we're going to copy this. Here's our imports, and then we're just going to do router stuff. So this will look pretty um, self-explanatory. They have his router. Here's a basic example. So you have a router object. I'm also going to use a switch, which I'll explain how that works. But then you have your routes, and you say what the URL is and what the component you want to render. So here, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff, and we're just going to render a regular, a functional, or a function for a component. And we're going to paste, oops, let's paste that at the top. And we don't have to rename it, that's fine. We're saying link, we don't need a link here, but I'm going to use a switch. Um, and switch, all that does, oh yeah, we need to put stuff here. All a switch does is say render only one route at a time. So I'm going to say browser router. 
and I'm gonna have a switch in here and we'll have one route so I'm gonna make it exact and I'll set a path and exact means um, it matches this exact thing so if I go to route so if this was my route and I have the component home which we will make in a second import home from home so let's say we have this route set up here and we don't need this delete to f if I didn't have the keyword exact um, the path slash bob matches this right because there's a slash here and there's a slash here also it would match slash b and slash bo and slash bob but if I push exact or not push if I add that as an attribute then it only matches this it doesn't match slash bob so that's what we want so let's create this home component um, and just make sure everything is working and we got uh, GraphQL working. So we're going to do just a sample query, or uh, yeah, sample query to make sure everything's working. So here's our home component. I'm thinking let's run a query. Um, let's do all users and just show their IDs. Why not? That's super simple. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. So we're going to say const all users query is equal to GQL. That's something we're going to grab from uh, Apollo client. So import GQL and GraphQL from React Apollo. And down here we're going to say GraphQL. This is a higher order component that's going to wrap our component. We say the query we want to basically um, handle or give to our component. So I want to run the all users query with the home component. And it's going to be passed in with a data prop. And we're going to get a loading. And we're going to get um, a all users object, which will be the array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say loading. Then we're going to show null if we're not loading will actually show stuff. Alternatively, we could say like a little loading indicator. And then here I'm going to say all users dot map and we'll have a user here. And we're just gonna render an H1 with the key of U dot ID and U dot ID. And you know what? It makes more sense. Why don't we show their emails? So let's select that field right here. So give that a save, everything formats, and we can take a look at what this component's doing. So we have a home component. It's taking the props um, data, which is given to us by GraphQL higher order component. It's running this query, and then it's putting the data into our home component. And while it's loading, loading is true. And when we get the data, it puts in this variable called all users. So the reason why it's called all users here is because it matches the name of our query. So our query here is called all users. So we're going to be given a prop called all users there. So when it's loading, we're returning nothing. When loading is false, that means our data has been loaded into the component and we can actually display something on the screen. So we can say all users dot map and H1 and the key we're just grabbing. So we're mapping through each user and we're displaying an H1 for each user using the key which you have to use when you're mapping through an array. Um, this is a unique identifier for um, each element in the array. Ideally, you want to do some kind of ID. And then here you have uh, just the value that we want in the H1. So now I'm going to open up the console for this, and I'm going to say npm start. Um, if you have console open over here, you can do npm start as well. OK. And I'm going to say yes to run this on another thing and let's see if our home component loads and it should get a one we should expect to see um, this response um, property map so 
all users all users is undefined okay so we're getting a response the pre request doesn't pass okay so I've had this happen to me I wonder if it's okay so we don't have cores set up um, I'm gonna try this with incognito if incognito doesn't work we'll just add cores real quick okay cores this doesn't work so let's go add cores real quick Okay, so here is the back end uh, I have up in Visual Studio Code. We're gonna close this. I'm gonna close some of these files. So we're getting an error with um, basically saying we're not allowed to access the server. So what we need to do is we need to use um, a cores library. So I'm gonna CD out of here and go into my Slack server and I need to install a package called cores. So I'm gonna do yarn add cores and so what I'm gonna do is just import cores from cores and then I just say app.use cores and then star. So what that's saying is we're allowing um, all websites to access our server. Um, it's ideal for you to just specify the single server that should um, like for example we know localhost 3001 so you can put localhost 3001 here I don't know if you have to do HTTP or not I forget but I'm just gonna do a star so we make sure everything's working and I think we're just getting this cuz I don't know why it says that oh I just misspelled from Okay, so let's see if we still get that error. Okay, we do. Um, and the reason for that, we're now we're getting a new error. I forgot to do slash GraphQL here. So you need to make sure to point to the actual GraphQL endpoint for your network interface. And bam, so we have both our emails showing up, so our query is working. So our front end is all set up then. Our home component is able to make GraphQL queries. That means we can also do mutations and we have our router set up so now we can have uh, lots of different pages. Um, real quick before I end, I wanna show you alternatively one way you could handle this is instead of doing loading null, I could just ignore loading and set the default value of all users to an empty um, array. And this will work and not crash because when it's still loading, the array will be empty and we won't render anything. So that's just an alternate way to handle this as well. Because notice, uh, I'll show you what happens if I get rid of the default. Um, we get an error because when it's loading, this guy is equal to undefined. So you need to have a default value or don't show it when it's loading. All right, cool. So that is it for this video, guys. I'll put the code up on GitHub and the link in the description below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.